Oh, well, we've been um, the, starting last week in, in a new series called All I Want for Christmas is You. Maybe you're familiar with the classic song, uh, but the heart of this message series is about the, the worship of Christmas. And so I just want to share a quick thought this morning uh, on that idea through a story that we probably don't give a lot of recognition to at Christmas time. In fact, it's, it's a story that's often skipped over as part of this Christmas story, but it comes from Luke chapter 1, and it's a story of a couple named Zechariah and Elizabeth. Um, now, Zechariah was a priest, and uh, he and Elizabeth were unable to have children, and uh, the Bible says that they were both advanced in years, like me, right? They were old, <laughs> but let's pick it up in Luke chapter 1. Verse 8, and if you want to follow along, it'll be on the screen as well. It says, Now while he was serving as a priest before God, when his division was on duty according to the custom of the priesthood, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. Imagine just for a second that our church was like that, that you got to be the one to go and worship, and if you, got, if you were going to be the one, you would have to win a game in order to go and worship. That's how badly they wanted to worship God. It was an honor to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And so Zechariah won, cho choosing lots, or maybe he lost, I don't know. But the whole multitude of people were praying outside at the hour of incense while he was inside. And there appeared to him, verse 11, appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Now this was a big responsibility to be the one to enter the temple. And he was supposed to be the only one in there. Imagine his shock and his surprise when somebody else shows up in the room at that moment. This angel is standing next to him by the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell on him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. And your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at birth, for he will be great before the Lord. And he must not drink wine or strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn hearts of the fathers to the children. And the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make them ready for the Lord a people prepared. He was preparing the way for the Savior that would come, uh, who was ultimately John's cousin, Jesus. Can you imagine if someone showed up in your office at work, first of all, just showed up without like coming through the door, and, and told you something like this? Here you've lived most of your life wanting a child and not being able to have one. And here's this promise from a complete stranger, not only saying, uh, that you're going to have a child in your old age, but also that he, this is going to be a special child, that he's going to have a purpose and a plan that God is going to use him in an incredible way. And uh, not only that, we're picking the name for you. John is going to be his name. Now, <laughs> he, talked about, uh, he talked about people in this man's life but he had no idea who he was. He referenced his wife. He talked about his family. Imagine the shock and surprise in that moment. And imagine how you would be feeling as you heard news like this. And Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. This man was smart. He called himself old, but he said his wife was advanced in years. That's a much nicer way of saying it. Right? He's not stupid. And the angel answered him, I'm Gabriel, and I stand in the presence of God, and was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time. And the people were waiting for Zechariah, and they were wondering about his delay in the temple. And when he came out, he was unable to speak to them. 
And they realized that he had seen a vision in the temple. And he kept making signs to them and remained mute. And when the time of his service was ended, he went to his home. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived. And for five months, she kept herself hidden, saying, Thus the Lord has done for me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among the people. Now, I felt like Zechariah's response was actually a pretty reasonable one in this instance. I love how he says, um, I'm an old man. My wife is advanced in years. Like, this doesn't make sense to me. And if you were in that boat too, you would probably be saying something the very same way. Like, how am I supposed to know that this is true? But Gabriel didn't really have mercy on Zechariah. He, he was pretty blunt in his response. He basically said, hey, you want a sign? Here's one. You can't talk anymore. Now, I don't know about you, but that would be torture for me, okay? Not being able to run my mouth at all, all right? I would be even... <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Laura goes, it would be great getting some shade. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine how obnoxious I would be on the West Point Fantasy Football group chat if I couldn't talk with my mouth? Uh, right? <laughs> no, um, <laughs> when we think of somebody losing their ability to speak suddenly, we usually think of like somebody having a stroke or something like that. And, and even though they maybe didn't have that same medical terminology back then, I'm sure his friends and his family maybe thought that was what happened in that instance, that he was having some sort of medical issue. But Zechariah knew the truth. He knew that this was a sign that had been given to him by the angel to verify what had been prophesied over his life. And he comes out after making this important offering, and he's normally expected to say something after doing this, but he can't speak at all. Well, Fast forward a few uh, verses to the end of this chapter, and we get to hear the rest of the story. You see, between what happened there, we also get the revelation that Mary was going to have a child too, that she was promised that she would carry Jesus, the Savior of the world. And she became pregnant, and she went to go visit her cousin Elizabeth, and as they were talking, the, the baby in Elizabeth's stomach jump for joy when Mary came close. There was something inside her that knew that this child was special, that John and Jesus would have this special relationship. And so all of this happened, and then it came time for this baby, John, to be born. And we read about it in verse 57. It says, Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth. And she bore a son, and her neighbors and her relatives heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. And on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they would have called him Zechariah after his father. But his mother answered, No, he shall be called John. And they said to her, Nobody listens to the wife. They should just listen to her in the first place, right? They said to her, none of your relatives are called by this name. And they made signs to his father inquiring. I love how he can't talk, so they make signs to him. Yes. Okay. <laughs> right? Inquiring what they want the child to be called. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, his name is John. And they all wondered and immediately his mouth was opened. And Zechariah got to talk again. It says his tongue loosed, and the first thing he spoke was blessing to God. And fear came on all the neighbors, and all these things were talked about through all the hill country of Judea. And all who heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What then will this child be? For the hand of the Lord was with him. Wasn't that an incredible story of how God uh, had a plan and how God delivered on his promise and how Zechariah responded with a heart of worship 
after nine months of not being able to speak, the first words that came out of his mouth were a blessing to God. It was worship. It was praise. Would you like to hear what he said? I want you to just close your eyes and listen to this as I read the rest of this chapter. And just let this this worship song that Zechariah wrote sink in. And his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and he has raised up the horn of salvation for us in the house of David. And as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies, from the hand of all who hate us, to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath that he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we being delivered from the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and in righteousness before him all of our days. And you, child, will be called prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge and salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby sunrise shall visit us from on high, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. You know, when God speaks to us, when we have a moment where we encounter him, when we place our trust in him, when we find ourselves in a place of submitting to him and saying, God, I trust you and I'll be obedient to you. Just in that moment when Zechariah acknowledged his belief and his trust in what God had promised him by writing on that tablet, his name is John. An act of obedience can spark something inside of us. It can remind us of the faithfulness of our Savior and our Father. And just like Zechariah burst forth in blessing and in praise to his God, we ought to do the same. Maybe you're here this morning and you're struggling with something. You're wrestling with maybe the circumstances of your life. Uh, Maybe you're going through a hardship right now. Maybe this season is a difficult time of year for you. I'm here to tell you that God's promises are true regardless of what your circumstances are. The things that he's spoken to you in the past remain true regardless of what you see around you. And the hope of salvation is in his promise. And as we place our faith in Jesus and as we trust in him, which is exactly what Zechariah was prophesying here, the hope of a savior, the forgiveness of sins, the life that comes through Christ. As we rely on that and as we trust in that, our hope is secure. We're going to close this morning with the chance to worship, with the chance to lift up your voice and sing. But I want to pray for you this morning. And maybe you're going through a difficult time. Maybe this season brings up some challenges and you just need a touch from the Lord. You need him to speak to you. You need him to remind you of the promises of his word and the things that he's spoken to you in the past. So if you're going through hardship right now and you need a, a touch from the Lord, you need him to do something in your life, Whatever it is, I don't need to know what your need is, but God knows exactly what you're going through. And if that's you this morning, would you just raise up your hand? I just want to pray for you this morning. Is there anybody that would say, yeah, that's me. I could use that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Can we stand together in this place as I lead us in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are good, that you love us, that you saw Zechariah in his pain and suffering. You saw his hurt. You saw what was going on in his heart. 
And Lord, sometimes your promises can seem too good to be true, but you are a faithful God who's faithful to your word. So Lord, we just lift up each person right now that's, that's feeling the weight of struggle, that's going through a difficult time, that's maybe um, having a, a difficult season. Maybe it's a memory or, or something of someone that's not there. Maybe it's just a hardship this time of year. Uh, God, you know exactly what they're walking through. So Lord, we pray that your hand would be on them. Lord, that your peace would surround them, just like Zechariah prophesied. And Lord, we thank you for the hope that comes through your son, Jesus. He's the reason we celebrate. He's the reason we sing. He's the reason we rejoice. So Lord, as, as we enjoy this time together this morning and laugh and have fun together, Lord, we remember that the reason that we celebrate is you. And we give you praise this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.